I am going to walk you through completing Melinda Flowers 1040 form, which is the example scenario in this activity, Calculate Completing a 1040. So we see at the very top, we have some information about Melinda, including a link to her W-2 form, which I have open right here on my computer. So I have her W-2 form, which is going to be really helpful for us to um, complete her 1040. Here's a little bit about Melinda. Melinda is age 18. She lives with her parents and is going to be headed to college in the fall. As far as employment, she worked 10 hours a week during senior year at a local ice cream shop and 40 hours a week during the summer. So we have a little bit of info about Melinda. If I go ahead and scroll down in this activity, I, I am going to eventually do other scenarios, but I'm walking you through this example with Melinda. But for each of them, I'm going to complete the 1040 form, which you could do on paper for these classroom examples, or as I'm going to do, I'm going to do it digitally, and I have a copy of that form open here. So I've opened just with this direct link. One other helpful piece of information before we get started is if you scroll down to page two in this activity, I have some additional instructions. And this is really helpful if you find some tricky um, line items within the 1040 form that maybe you're not sure how to complete. And you see it gives us some hints and tips sort of line by line in this, in this helpful chart within the activity. So we'll refer to that as we go through Melinda um, in our example. So let's scroll back up to the top, and I'm going to go ahead and open up, again, her W-2 form, which I encourage you to do, and the 1040 form. First, let's just get a little peek at the W-2 form so we know where to find some information. And here is Melinda's W-2 form. And you see in this box here, I have Melinda's information, her name and her address, as, long as, as well as I have her employer's information in box C up here at the very top. I have her wages is listed up here in box one, and then also any taxes that were withheld from her pay are also listed on the W-2 form. And I have some important information down here at the bottom in boxes 16 and 17. So I'm gonna use that information as I'm completing the 1040. So let's go ahead and hop over to the 1040 form and we're gonna complete this line by line for Melinda Flowers. I am gonna start by adding Melinda's personal information up here on the very top of the form. So I'm going to add her um, first name and middle initial as well as her last name in the top few boxes. You would then add social security number. And again, if we go back to Melinda's W-2 form, we have her social security number listed here, 987, and then some X's listed there because this is for classroom purposes. And so for that reason, I'm gonna leave that blank, but you would add your social security number here. If Melinda was filing a joint return, she would list her spouse's first and last name in this spot, as well as spouse's social security number. But Melinda does not have a spouse and nor do any of the characters in this activity. I'm now gonna add Melinda's home address, which again, you can pull from her W-2 form. So we have Melinda's address here, 456 Central Drive, San Diego, California. And so I'm gonna add that here. So 456 Central Drive, um, San Diego. Oops, I'm sorry. And then California. And the zip code, which is 92101. Let me just make sure I did that correctly. 92101, yes. This is a box where if you would like to, you can donate to presidential election campaign. But for this classroom purpose, we're going to leave that blank. And then we're going to scroll down to the filing status. So remember, with Melinda, Melinda is 18. She lives with her parents. She's going to be heading off to school in the fall. And so Linda and Melinda is going to file as a single status for this example. The next section is asking about digital assets. And if at any time during 2024, did you receive or sell or exchange any type of digital asset? And again, in the activity instructions, we have this little section about additional instructions and none of our characters are going to have any digital assets. So I can go ahead and check no for that. Now I'm in the standard deduction section. And again, using what you've learned about standard deduction and knowing that Melinda's 18 and lives with her parents and is heading to college soon, someone else can claim her as a dependent. And so I'm gonna go ahead and check that box. Someone can claim you as a dependent. This section would be appropriate if the person was born before the date listed or are blind as well as spouse information. 
That is not relevant for this character, so we're going to continue on. This section is the dependents section. And if you had any dependents, you would list their information here in the box. Melinda does not have any dependents, nor do any of the characters in this activity. So I'm gonna leave that blank. Now I'm getting to the section of the form where I'm gonna fill things out line by line within the form. And we're gonna reference the W2 form to do that. So I see in line 1A, I'm going to take the total amount from my W-2 form uh, um, as far as income. And so looking at Melinda's W-2 form, we see that she made $22,500 is what is listed as her wages. And so I'm going to add that amount here on line 1A. Line 1B is any household wages. We have line C as tip income, Medicaid payments, employer uh, provided adoption benefits, all of these listed here are not going to be applicable to Melinda or any other characters. And so I'm going to go ahead and put zeros on those lines, including line um, 1i, which is any non-taxable combat pay. Then on line 1z, it tells me to add lines 1a through 1h, which is pretty easy for us. It's 22,500. Line 2B is asking about any taxable interest or qualified dividends or if she took um, any distributions from her IRA or Social Security benefits. And Melinda does not have any of those. So I'm going to go ahead and put zeros in all of those as far as the 2A and 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, and 6B. Again, just reminding you that in the activity document, you can look at these additional instructions and they'll give you some hints for how to fill out um, this information. So you see that it's gonna be zero for all the characters in this activity. Okay, we are now on line um, seven in this um, activity and we have any capital gains or losses from a Schedule um, D, and Melinda doesn't have that, so we're going to put zero. If she has any additional income from Schedule 1, we would put that, and she does not have any, so zero. So line 9 tells us to add lines 1Z, 2B, uh, 3B, 4B, all of those, and that's going to be Melinda's total income. And for us, it's pretty easy. It's $22,500 is Melinda's total income. If there are on line 10, any adjustments to the income from schedule one, we would put that there, but we don't have any of that information for Melinda. So we're gonna put zero. Line 11 tells us to subtract line 10 from line nine, and that would be Melinda's adjusted gross income. So for us, it's $22,500. Now on line 12, this is where we are going to have standard deduction or itemized deductions. And for Melinda, if you remember from her scenario, she is single. She makes more than the standard deduction. So she's going to claim the standard deduction in this line, which is line 12, which is $14,600 for the current tax year. Line 13 is any qualified business income deductions. Melinda doesn't have that and nor do any of the characters in this activity. And then in line 14, we are going to add lines 12 and 13 together. And for us, that's going to be 14,600. Now on line 15, we are going to subtract line 14 from line 11. So we're going to take this total here on line 14 and subtract it from line 11, which is her adjusted gross income, and that's going to be her taxable income, the income that she's going to then pay taxes on, which is $7,900. I'm going to continue scrolling down, and now I'm on line 16, where I determine some tax and credits. And so we had Melinda's taxable income of $7,900. This is where I determine what type of tax she owes. And so I'm going to refer back into our um, activity document. And you see for line 16 here, again, that's where we're at, line 16 in the 1040 form. In line 16, I'm going to refer to the tax table. In They have it hyperlinked right here within the activity, which is page 65 of the 1040 instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and open those 1040 instructions here in another tab. I'm going to go to directly to page 65 in here, 
And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for her taxable income here, that $7,900 within the tax tables. So I'm going to find the $7,900 here within the range. So here's $7,900. Here's the range. And remember, Melinda was single. So I'm looking in that single column. And so her tax is $793. And so I'm going to note that here on line 16, $793. We would add in line 17, any amount from schedule two, which Melinda does not have. And so now on line 18, I'm gonna add lines 16 and 17 together, which is 793. Continuing on, lines 19 is any child tax credit or credit for dependents. Remember, Melinda did not have those. And, and also none of the characters in this activity will have that. Line 20 is any amount from Schedule 3. She does not have that. And so I'm going to add lines 19 and 20 together. Zero plus zero is zero. And then line 21 is where I'm going to subtract line 21 from 18. If it were zero or less, you would enter zero. But for us in line 22, it's 793. Line 23, any other taxes, including a self-employment tax, Melinda does not have. And so you'll add lines 22 and 23 together. And so ours is 793. And this is Melinda's total tax. All right, now I'm into the section. So total tax for Melinda is $793. Now we're into the payments section. So we're going to look at how much federal income tax was withheld from per paycheck. So we're going to look at her W-2 form, and I'll open that up here on the tab. And I'm going to look here in box two of how much federal income tax was withheld from her pay. And that tells us that $1,135 was withheld. So I'm going to enter that amount here, $1,135. If she had a form 1099, which Melinda does not, she just has the W-2 form, and any other forms, we would add that information. But she, again, only has the W-2 form. So now in line 25D, I'm going to add those three together, which for Melinda is 1135 Line 26 is any estimated tax payments that are applied. For Melinda, that's zero. And again, I'm just referring that, remember, we do have this little cheat sheet of information or kind of some instructions that help you if you're wondering whether or not that character has that information. One, it would be linked within the document here, um, the activity document, and two, you can reference this if you need to. Okay, I am on line 27 in which we're looking at any earned income credit, child tax credit, um, American Opportunity credit, and Melinda does not have any of those, so I'm going to go ahead and put zeros in those amounts. And then for line 32, we're going to add all those together. And so for us, it's still zero. And that's any other payments or refundable credits, and she did not have any. So for line 33, I am going to add lines 25D plus 26 plus 32. And so for Melinda, her total payments, what she paid is $1,135. All right, we're almost to the end of the form, and now we are on line 34. And here is where if line 33 is more than line 24, we're going to subtract that, and that is the amount that was overpaid. So again, if line 33 is more than line 24, which for us it is, we're going to subtract, and that amount is what is overpaid. So for us, it is $342. If it was not line 34, excuse me, line 33 was not more um, than line 24, then we would kind of skip down here to 37 and she would owe money down here. So you see the directions of the amount that you owe. But for us, it is the amount she overpaid. And so line 35A is how much she would want refunded. And that is the full amount, $342. She could then add routing and account information for checking and savings in here for it to be direct deposited. We don't owe any money, which is lines 37 and 38, because she overpaid here. Again, if that difference was, if that was different, where that, where line 34 was not more than 24, we would hop down and she would owe money. 
Then we would sign off this information here. And for our classroom um, example purposes, uh, you can follow your teacher's discretion. And then we have completed Melinda's 1040 form. Melinda will get a refund of $342. Now in the activity, this is our example, as we said, of walking you through that process. And now you'll move on and you'll complete three other characters. And as you do that, you'll see when you scroll down in the activity, there's a area to, to write what their refund is or if they owe money and then link to the digital 1040 and following your teacher's um, directions.